Hi there. I thought I would show you the February Wine Club wines in video form because I haven't written one word of the notes yet. And it is, in fact, February Wine Club time. Yep, come and get them. Those wines are ready to pick up even if the notes are not ready to read. So here is a substitute. I'm going to show you very briefly the 12 wines that we have chosen for February. Yes, we have to choose 12 wines every month. I don't say have to. Uh, I say get to. In other words, we taste about 100 to 150 wines absolutely every week with spit bucket nearby and notebook in front along with a pen and uh, do a lot of sniffing and sipping on your behalf in order to choose from those hundreds of wines every month that we try, 12 wines, two for each club. Each monthly wine club membership grants you two bottles of wine that we have chosen as distinctively Dis delicious. Maybe I should say distinctly delicious. I think that's more proper. Anyway, let's do these uh, little uh, talk-ups on these wines in the order that you might be reading about them. In other words, we always start our notes. All of you members get the notes for all the clubs in case uh, you find the notes from other clubs so enticing or the, our description so enticing that you really want to get in on those as well. And it's not unusual for wine club members to say, uh, upon picking up their wine. Hey, can I get one of these and these? I read all of the notes and Jim sounded pretty enthusiastic about the wine from that other club. So that's why we send you all the notes because we are greedy for your business. Sorry. At any rate, let's start with the Red Collector Club real quick. Um, these are both this time around Napa Valley wines. As you Red Collector Club members know, we often stray up to, well, maybe next door to Sonoma and frequently to Washington State, but this time both Napa Valley. And as you may see, I'm not gonna put the bottles next to each other uh, per club uh, every time, but I wanted to do this because here you go, uh, two very different heights of bottles and sizes. Maybe you can't even see the top here, but this is a big fat bottle. And frankly, so is the, uh, the ego on the guy who makes it. But uh, Scott Palazzo, he is a quite a gentleman uh, to listen to, uh, especially when he's talking about his own wines. He's very enthusiastic, and uh, yeah, the wines are as well. So this is called Left Bank by Palazzo. It's a 2017 blend of 50% Cabernet, 25% Merlot, and the remainder is Cabernet Franc. It is big and mellow. It has gorgeous vanilla qualities that enhance the soft, kind of dusty cherry fruit. Really delicious Left Bank. Now, what's interesting, I didn't even mean for this to happen, is the other wine in the club is nicknamed Right Bank Wine. Well, what are these alluding to, these banks? What, what the hell? Well, in Napa, they are often inspired to make a wine by what happens over in Bordeaux, France. And, you know, that's the home of the Bordeaux family of grapes, Cabernet Merlot, Cab Sauv. And the river runs through that huge area of Bordeaux. It becomes really more of an estuary after a while called the Gironde. And on the right bank of the Gironde, that's where wines are, right bank wines. And they tend to emphasize the Merlot grape. On the left bank, Cabernet tends to be king, um, but is rarely done monovarietally. In other words, it is almost always a blend, but Cabernet based. So you have a Cabernet based left bank red. And look here from Matera, you have a wine called right bank, which is in fact based on Merlot and has a little pinch of Cab Franc in it to go along. And that's not unusual for a right bank Bordeaux wine. Well, this is made by Chelsea Barrett. Ever heard that name, Barrett? Her dad is Beau Barrett, the longtime winemaker of Chateau Madalena. Her mother is Heidi Barrett, first winemaker of Screaming Eagle and uh, continues to make wine for great wineries across the valley, along with her, her, her own label. Um, I am most reminded of a wine that Heidi makes called Paradigm. Paradigm Winery is, I think, directly across the street from Nickel and Nickel in Oakville. And I love the mellowness, the gentleness of Paradigm Wines, and I believe this is a chip off the old block, so to speak. Chelsea Barrett, daughter of Heidi, making a wine somewhat in that style called Matera. All the fruit here comes from, where? Oak Knoll District, which is, if you've ever heard of Hendry, that's where Hendry is in the southern Napa Valley. Really nice wine, mellow Matera. Right bank, left bank, kind of cool, huh? The next wine club that we're going to talk about is the World Class Wine Club, and that gives you two foreign wines, kind of up a notch in quality every month. Here is a wine from Toro, Spain. Well, Spain is, of course, well known based on growing a lot of Tempranillo, right? The most famous Tempranillo locations, got to get that R rolled, 
are Rioja and Ribera del Duero. Down the Duero River from Ribera del Duero is this place called Toro. Not as well known, not as famous, and frankly, it doesn't always deserve to be as well known or famous because Toro tends to make very rustically oversized wines. This, alternatively, is effective. Is it light? No, it actually has quite a uh, alcohol number on it, but it it plays it well, it holds its liquor well, you could say, with um, good structure, dark color, very impressive, big Tempranillo that actually has a girdle on it. <laughs> it, it has good restraint in spite of its size, how about that? <laughs> this is very good Toro from Dominio del Bendito. We've uh, called it one of our best wines on the uh, our top list of 2022, and uh, now we're putting it in the World Class Wine Club. The other wine is cool. Uh, this is Jakubian Hobbs. Well, I kind of have heard of Hobbs. Who might that Hobbs be? That would that would be a traveling winemaker named Paul Hobbs, who's done a lot, especially down in Argentina, to bring that industry up, that wine industry. And now he travels to Armenia to team up with a producer called Jakubian to make wine in a location of Armenia in the shadow of Mount Ararat. Yep, Noah's Ark might still be up there. Um, near a cave, the, the vineyard providing this wine, the grape is called Arani, and there's this cave nearby that contains the oldest winemaking artifacts ever found. So we could say the oldest winery in the world is like next door to where this wine is now made. So the grape Arani, uh, mellow, spicy, um, kind of gentle on the palate compared to the Toro Tempranillo. Um, and the cool thing is Paul Hobbs is involved. He makes his own fantastic Napa Valley wines, and he does something in New York with Riesling, and he does, of course, the Argentina project, and so on. So Paul Hobbs now in Armenia. Go figure. The next wine club that we'll talk about is the California Wine Club. No, it's not. We've changed the name. Why? Because we often reference Washington State and occasionally Oregon for that club as well. So California Wine Club just kind of like... Uh, the validity of that name was wearing thin, so we are going to rename it the Pacific Coast Wine Club. How about that? Pacific Coast, and in fact, it's a good thing we did come up with that name because, in fact, both wines this month are from Washington State. Here is Requiem, Requiem Red Blend. These folks also make a Cabernet, but in this case, this is half Merlot and half Syrah, and I happen to believe that those are the two best grapes happening in Washington State. You think of Washington State sometimes, at least some casual consumers out there, uh, as a place that must be damp and wet and Pinot Noir growing. It's not. They don't do Pinot Noir hardly at all in Washington State. We are not in Oregon anymore, Toto. We are in high desert. Eastern Washington State is one of the driest places in, in the United States. And um, that's where they do great Cabernet and Merlot and Syrah and things like that, typically. We're about to surprise you with the other wine. But this is half Syrah, half Merlot, Good, solid, dark wine, Requiem. Now, why are we gonna surprise you? Because in fact, there is now some Pinot Noir growing in Washington State, and Charles Smith is the uh, perpetrator of that. Uh, this is Substance Pinot Noir. Maybe you've seen this label before at the grocery store. <laughs> I know you go there. At any rate, um, this is Substance, the brand, one of the Charles Smith brands called Substance. It is, in fact, meant to resemble uh, the periodic table of elements, so the element Pinot Noir, as if Pinot is an element. Pinot Noir, as grown in Washington, mellow, soft, round, thoughtful, delicious, not dark, elegant. Um, it's really true to Pinot Noir, and it's a nice surprise that it can happen in Washington State. Not just Oregon, not just California, not just New Zealand, not just Burgundy. <laughs> yes, Washington State now has Pinot Noir. It's nice stuff, very mellow. All right, what club shall we talk about now? Hey, how about this? I was in uh, the Anaheim area uh, over the holidays, and uh, on a, uh, a few days after New Year's, we were bored to tears and thought, let's go for a drive. So we went out to, I think, Costa Mesa and visited a wine shop down there, a wine shop that's been around longer than we have and has definitely got an amazing inventory. It's called High Time Wine Cellars, and I bought this and uh, brought it home and uh, in Livermore, drank this wine that I think Livermore ought to be trying to make. This is a wine called uh, La Fonde. La Fonde is the producer. Lirac. Lirac is a wine region, a sub-region of the Rhone Valley, Southern Rhone Valley. In fact, it's directly across the Rhone River from a more fa famous place called Chateau Neuf de Pop. Um, the cool thing about this is a um, yet another 
proof of my mandate to you by proximity. In other words, if you love famous wine but can't drink it all the time because the name has gotten so famous, a regional name that is like Gevry Chambertin in Burgundy or Chateauneuf de Pop in the Southern Rhone, by proximity, go next door or go not too far away, stones throw away and you will get better value. A similar wine for less. Lirac makes Grenache Syrah Mavedra blends, GSM, and maybe this is not of the stature and ageability of Chateauneuf de Pop, but it's got everyday drinking qualities and everyday drinking pricing. So try this Lirac, Southern Rhone Red, delicious, from the 2020 vintage, which is not as dark and purple as the 2019, and that's kind of nice once in a while. This has a little more perk and lift. It's fully ripe, but it's more red than purple, if that makes any sense. Okay, the other wine in the uh, Wine Adventure Wine Club, I don't think we renamed that one yet. This is Mendel Cabernet, very classy Cabernet from where? Mendoza, Argentina, where you might see more Malbec, right? Well, this guy makes a great Malbec. I think he does an even better Cabernet. This is very good right down the middle, not overstuffed and not light Cabernet. I think it's gonna to appeal to so many of you because of that like fence straddling style. Delicious Mendel Cabernet. By the way, we're gonna have our annual South America events pretty soon here. Lizzie Butler will be coming back with Chile and Argentina uh, wine. So uh, stay tuned for that. Mendel Cabernet in the meantime for your club. Let's go to the White Wine Club and put before you a what? A rosé. Yes, we we do this to you or for you. It depends on your attitude about it. Uh, once or twice a year, we give you a dry rosé because in fact, dry rosé is really remind us of dry white wines, crisp, refreshing. Why not? You know, it's just got a little tint to it. I hope you're over that or hope you like that. So many people have over the last 23 years that the wine steward's been around, can you believe it, have gotten over the hump of the stigma of pink wine and have realized dry pink wine is fantastic and it's a great alternative to dry white wine. I'll prove it right now. This comes from Liguria, Liguria, the capital of which is Genoa. Genoa nearby is the main city on the northwestern uh, coast of Italy. Uh, this grape is called Chile Giolo. You can make rosé out of any red grape you want, but in this case, they do it out of a grape that's uh, the name of which is fun to say, Chile Giolo, which may be a parent of Sangiovese, but there's a big fight about that. Others are saying it is the offspring of Sangiovese. At any rate, who gives a damn? Let's drink it. Crisp, bone dry, perfumey, floral, citric, delicious. It's a 2021. I'm kind of off of my kick of buying only the newest rosés to hit the market. In other words, we have 2022s landing here now. And I used to be very stubborn about saying, we will not buy older rosé. Well, this is not old. I bought this because it's dynamic, it's young, it's fresh, it's alive. <laughs> if it ever warms up around here, this is gonna be perfect out on the patio. In the meantime, drink it inside. Keep the door shut, will you? All right, here's another zinger, and this will be, in fact, white. This is 2019, and it yet, again, kind of breaks my old rule that I've now <laughs> thrown away, thrown out the rule book, um, that said, do not buy white wine unless it is young, uh, especially if it's no oak, uh, you know, if it's, unless it's a Chardonnay that likes a little bit of development, do not buy, Jim, please do not buy older white wine. Well, this is 10.5% alcohol, high acid Semillon from the Hunter Valley of Australia. It's a 2019 and man, it tastes like it was made yesterday. In fact, I got to make sure again. Problem with screw caps, another stigma for you to get over because they're great for preserving the wine, but they are way too easy to get unscrewed. This is Tyrell's, very, very famous. Maybe you don't know, maybe haven't even heard of Semillon, maybe you haven't heard of Australian Semillon, but this is considered by the wine books, if you read those, uh, a benchmark, if not the benchmark for Australian Semillon, and it's actually ageable. We're gonna prove it, 2019 here, and I'll bet it would hold up for another five years at least. Yep, 10.5% alcohol, zingy, fresh, mm, delicious. Pretty cool. White Wine Club, you are getting that. How about this? Let's show you now what is happening in... Oh boy, am I missing something? Am I missing a club? One, two, three, four, five. No, we got one club left to tell you about. We're going to take you back to Argentina for Santa Julia. This producer is also known as Zucardi. That's kind of like their 
their uh, the name for their flagship wines, and then Santa Julia is their like less expensive stuff. But this is delicious, less expensive stuff made from um, 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 what I believe to be the two best grapes for Argentina. That would be Malbec and Cabernet Franc. Yes, Cabernet Franc often surprises us from there. These guys, Zuccardi, make a fantastic Cabernet Franc that we make club for the uh, wine adventure people pretty soon here. At any rate, in the meantime, enjoy this wine. A very nice, solid, durable red um, in your mouth. Good, good, good color impact, good impact on the palate. And we did, yes, you may recognize it if you're longtime members as something we clubbed a few years ago. Well, it's back, a new vintage thereof. Uh, Santa Julia, what do they call it? Mountain blend. You know, everything in Mendoza, Argentina is automatically at 3,000 feet elevation and goes up from there. Remarkable. Um, let's take you to Spain for a Tempranillo. I know we did that uh, just a few minutes ago uh, with a Toro for the World Class Wine Club. But this is obviously less expensive because it's landing in the, uh, I won't call it the cheap ass club, but this is our introductory red club that takes you all over the world for good solid Tuesday night style wines. This is called Cuatro Rayas and it comes from Rueda, but I believe they cannot call it a Rueda red because of the rules there. You can only say that when you're making Verdejo or blends with Verdejo, that white crepe. In fact, we gave their Verdejo, the white wine, to the White Wine Club a couple of months ago. Well, it's Tempranillo's turn. It is made and grown in Rueda, but on the back you'll see it says Castilla y León, which is a more general area kind of term, kind of like saying North Coast. Um, so this could be anywhere in kind of the center of Spain. We're about an hour north of Madrid, if that, uh, for a very nice, friendly, chuggable Tempranillo from Cuatro Rayas. Good stuff. Thank you very much for listening. I'll get those notes written in a minute. See you and come get your wines.